next item we're going to explore is the color operations tool. You may have noticed in the tool options panel in the previous brushes we had no options available here but this is the first one that will open up different options or sub tools and these are very similar if not identical to many of the tools you may already be used to in Photoshop so let's take a look at that the saturate and desaturate options are identical to the sponge tool in Photoshop this little icon here about midway down sponge tool and if you come up here to the toolbar you notice you have two different options saturate and desaturate the flow value slider here is identical to the opacity slider in 3d coat the burn and dodge tool might more appropriately be named lighten and darken uh, for whatever reason Adobe chose to use terms that are probably more familiar to photographers and not necessarily uh, CG artists in general but essentially again that's that's what you have in 3d coat is light and darken and uh, I want to mention while I'm here that some of these tools in Photoshop have more options here in the toolbar than 3d coat does but then at other times 3d coat is going to have more options for the same tool so this is where the live link between the two applications makes this workflow very seamless you can get back and forth without a break in your workflow whatsoever. Let me go ahead and try to demonstrate that quickly. Let's go over 3D Coats. I'm going to select a layer that I want to modify. I could work on all these layers if I want, but uh, 3D Coat gives me the option to work with just one layer or all of them. So if you go here to the Edit menu, you have Sync Layers with External Editor. This one will send just this particular layer over to Photoshop. The next one will send all the layers. So, with that said, the second one has a default hotkey combination, which is Control P. What I did here is I set my own keyboard combination for this first option. You can do that by hitting the end key on your keyboard. That's E and D. And now you can assign the hotkey you want to utilize. I chose Shift P because the other one is Control P. So now at any point if I want to quickly jump on over to Photoshop I don't even have to go to the menu I can just hit my hotkey it's gonna ask which UV is this you know layer assigned to or which one do you want to work with in this case the, the body UV map and in just one and a half to two seconds I'm right here in Photoshop so now if I want I can go ahead and utilize the dodge tool which allows me to work with either shadows, midtones, or highlights. So these options here are not available in 3D Coat. So this is again a situation where you might want to quickly jump on over into Photoshop, make your edits, and then quickly get back into 3D Coat. Let's choose midtones here. And I will apply it to the back area of the top part of the torso. And again, the exposure level is the same as opacity level in 3D Coat. So now all I have to do is just hit File, Save. In this case, I'll just stick with Hotkeys, which is Control S. And I'll click on the 3D Coat icon, and in a matter of about two seconds, it will update. Okay. So pretty easy. I can use one application as a, a very seamless extension of the other. So I'm not happy with that. So maybe it's a little bit too bright. I can go ahead and use the darken tool here. Bring my opacity level down a bit. With the same tool that I might use in Photoshop, I don't have the ability to apply this in cavities, but in 3D Coat I do. So I actually want to choose more in cavity and expand this little preview window here. I can see where it's going to apply color to. Okay, so I'll collapse that, move it out of the way. So you can see I can put the dark color ranges here just in the crevices. The 
then I can blur it with a smoothing tool here. And this is probably where I want to crank up the value. I'm also going to come out of cavity mode. In this particular tool, this is different than if you're working in the paintbrush or any one of these other tools because when you right click and drag up and down you're modifying the depth value here and that really relates to the depth channel it doesn't really adjust your opacity but if you're in the color operations tool now when you right click and drag up and down there's no depth value to modify it's just opacity and that's it so let's uh, crank it all the way up I can kind of break that up a little bit by smoothing. And if at any point in time I want to quickly jump back over into Photoshop to modify this further, Shift P, OK, Update, there we go. Just that simple. So let's go back over to 3D Coat here. The next thing we want to look at is increase hue and decrease hue. Let me bring up the bar picker here. When you click on increase hue, it's going to move your hue point or your color point to the left of the spectrum. Decrease hue is going to move it as you brush with each successive brush stroke further to the right. I find that the increase hue uh, button here, it, it typically starts here kind of about two-thirds of the way uh, to the right and it moves again moves to the left with each successive stroke. The decrease hue is about two-thirds of the way here on the left hand side it starts here and then it moves to the right. The hue shift really just determines basically how many strokes you have to create before it'll move on to the next you know major color. Let me go ahead and try to demonstrate that here. So again the opacity level dictates just how strong uh, this color change will be. And you can see I'm holding and brushing at the same time, but with each successive stroke it changes. So now it's moving to the left, now it's blue, green, yellow, and red. Okay, so I'll undo a few times. And if I bring this down to a very low amount, and now start making successive brushes, I don't have much of a value here, so it's very, very subtle. And it's taken more and more strokes to actually change colors here. Okay, so it's not changing nearly as quickly. So I'll undo that. So let's look at substitute hue. Basically, as you brush, it's going to try and replace uh, just the hue. The hue and saturation is substituting both hue and the saturation level. So let's try that. All right, so that's a look at the color operations tool in 3D Coat. We'll stop right here and pick it up in the next video covering the magnification and reduction brush. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.